Chris, your Chief Mom Ambassador here at Moms Meet. I'm so excited that you all could join us for our webinar, The Great Sweetener Debate 2012, where you'll learn more about sweeteners and why stevia is a healthier alternative for you and your family. It's my pleasure today to introduce you to our presenter, Natalie Gershon, uh, who's the Director of Marketing for Zevia and a fellow mom. At the end of her presentation, we'll have some time for Q&A, so feel free to submit your questions into the chat window, and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can. With that said, Natalie, please take it away. Hi, everybody. First, I want to thank you so much for your time um, and interest in this webinar. You know, sweeteners and healthy products for our families are something that we care so passionately about here at Zevia, so I hope you um, get something great out of this. So today, you know, we're going to uncover the truth about sweeteners, we're going to talk about beverages, not just soda, and a lot of other things. So let's start first with who we are. And I think that's an important, you know, piece of the puzzle because Zevia is made up of a team of both natural product enthusiasts and um, people with some great past experience at reputable, awesome companies like Kashi and Silk, Nature's Gate, Sony Field, and of course, Whole Foods Market. But we're parents, and you can see my little guy right there. That's Griffin. That's on the swings of the park this weekend. Um, we're parents in a pretty small company of 16 or so. We have 22 kids between us. So, you know, building this brand and bringing this soda to the world really isn't so much about the money. It's really about providing and bringing those healthier alternatives for our families because if it wasn't for these little people, we really wouldn't be, um, you know, nothing would be worth it. So, as I said, we're all parents, and I think it's really interesting because as parents, and I am, of course, newer to this, but have a lot of nieces and nephews, you wear a lot of hats. And uh, with my other mom friends, we joke about having this parental PhD. It's like all of a sudden, you have a child, and you are a chauffeur, and a chef, and a mediator. Um, it's like you've had a thousand years of schooling all rolled into one very, very tiny 40 weeks. But the one that scared us the most, and I think is, continues to be kind of our most top of mind subject, is being that nutritionist. You know, all of a sudden you're expected to know exactly what to feed your kids and your family. You obviously want to put only the healthiest products and great solutions for them in the house, but how do you know what what. And when it comes to sweeteners, we think there's a lot of information out there and a lot of alternatives and options, but it's hard to see through the, the myth and the messiness. So today I hope to provide you some information so you can make some choices on your own. So we're going to go through some myths and take a little bit of fact from each. Um, the first myth is that sugar is natural and natural is good. And as we all know, the term natural is a little bit ambiguous. So let's talk about each of these things that are called sugar. Um, sugar itself comes from sugar beets or sugar cane. Um, you know, it can lead to tooth decay and obesity. If you use it, you do need to limit it. Um, a quick way to visualize how much sugar is in an item is you can divide the number of grams on the nutrition panel of sugar by four, and that's the number of teaspoons within that item, which I was really, really shocked by. It might be a lot more than you think. High fructose corn syrup is interesting. You know, manufacturers are now marketing it as corn sugar, but HFCS is not exactly the same. Um, it is a chemically modified, still highly caloric compound. It doesn't match sugar identically, and a, you know, recent studies suggest that we metabolize it differently than sugar. So experts are saying that families should avoid it altogether. Um, obviously, we know that anyone looking at the GMO labeling are going to have some issues with corn sugar and high fructose corn syrup because most of it, you know, if it comes from the U.S., it's, you know, it's not able to be GMO free. So the fact is that sugar equals calories, and high fructose corn syrup is not exactly the same as sugar, although marketers are attempting to, to make you feel that way. Um, we have another myth is that natural sweeteners are good for uh, are good for us too. Um, agave is processed just like other sugars, and while plant-based, we don't believe it's any better for you. Um, it's actually more caloric than regular table sugar. It's about 60 calories per tablespoon to the 40 of regular sugar. Now, while it does come from a plant, and you get that extra bit of sweetness per tablespoon, um, it is a fructose-based corn or a fructose-based sweetener. Let's talk a little bit about fructose. 
fructose is the sugar that occurs naturally in fruits, vegetables, honey, um, plants like agave. Studies have recently linked fructose to greater rates of obesity, increased triglyceride levels, metabolic syndrome, renal dysfunction, and high blood pressure, among other things. And you know, I think when when studies as, as new as late 2011, early 2012 are referencing this link. With so many other alternatives, I think it provides an, you know, a reason to, to be wary, if you will. Uh, sucrose, I think this is so interesting. Sucrose is simply the chemical name for granulated white sugar or table sugar. You know, it's highly caloric. It's everything we talked about with sugar. But when you look up sucrose, you get a chemical um, compound symbol. So the idea that it's natural, but it's in fact this chemical amalgam of sweetener, um, scares me as a consumer and a mom. So we know that agave is higher in calories than sugar, and we know that fructose, while natural, doesn't necessarily mean healthy. So let's talk a little bit about artificial sweeteners and zero-calorie sweetening options that you probably recognize. Um, the first one is sucralose. And I think this is, this is the one I like to talk about the most because it's so fascinating to me, and we know that everybody has seen those little yellow packets. Natalie, um, can I interrupt real quick? Um, could, you move, sure. uh, could you move your slide forward a little bit? I don't think uh, we're seeing the right slide. Let's see here. Do you see, I'm sorry about that. Do you see it has a Splenda equal and sweet and low packets on the left? No, that's not the slide that's showing. Um, would you oh. like me to make myself a... Uh, yeah, would you do that? That would be great. Uh, I'm wondering if my internet connection is slowing down. I apologize, everyone. Not a problem. Give us one minute. Oh, actually, it looks like we are on the right slide now. Um, okay, good. On the next, um, we're on the slide about agave. Um, if you want to go ahead and move forward, next one. Um, I think it's working. Let me know when it moves. I am seeing the move on my end, but I'm worried a little bit about Okay, well, now. let me let me go ahead and switch over. I'm sorry, everyone. Great. All right. You should be seeing my screen. Okay, go ahead, Natalie. Fantastic. So, Let's talk a little bit about sucralose. And as you've all seen, the, the little yellow packets, you know, in on the tabletop sweeteners and in the grocery store, um, I think this one's the most misunderstood because the marketing around it implies that it's derived from sugar. Um, if you look back in studies, sucralose was actually discovered when trying to create a new insecticide. Uh, recent studies have found the presence of chlorine in sucralose, which is thought to be the most dangerous component of it. Uh, the digestion and absorption of sucralose is not clear due to the lack of long-term studies on humans. Uh, the majority of studies were actually done on animals for pretty short lengths of time. So the alleged symptoms associated with sucralose are, of course, gastrointestinal problems, skin irritations, chest pain. And I think, you know, the really interesting thing is that it's so new. The only way for us to have, to be sure of the safety of sucralose is to have a long-term study on humans done. So we can move on to aspartame, which has been around for a little while longer. It's a sweetener made in a lab from two amino acids and uh, methanol. While this sweetener has no calories, it's known to have side effects. And the Center for Science and the Public Interest says that people, especially children, should not consume, consume food and drink sweetened with it. And you know, something you want to be very cognizant of is that anything, you might not be putting it in your coffee or sweetening you know, anything you give your child with it per se yourself, but we find that, you know, I go to the grocery store and I'll look at yogurt. If you look at, look at yo low-fat yogurt, um, it's lower in calories or lower in fat because they're using an artificial sweetener in it sometimes. So it really pops itself up everywhere, you know, when we're talking about reducing calories within our diet. Definitely something to, be, to look for. And then saccharin. I think the, the pink packet has been around the longest. Since 1981, government reports have listed saccharin as anticipated human carcinogen. Those three words, I think, scared me away from ever 
ever picking up a pink packet again in my life. Uh, the AMA's Council on Scientific Affairs suggested that parents and caregivers limit young children's intake of saccharin, and little information is available on how it might affect them. And because saccharin can cause the uh, placenta, the Council of Scientific Affairs suggests that women use saccharin very carefully during pregnancy. And I believe the American Pregnancy Association actually has um, disavowed use of it during pregnancy. So while this fact is more my belief, I still hold up that artificial sweeteners are scary. The fact that they are an anticipated human carcinogen, pinching chlorine, and the you know they've been warned against use. So another myth that we're going to talk a little bit about is that soda is the only bad for you beverage. Um, I, that's typically been because regular soda is high in calories, even if it uses sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Diet soda contains artificial sweeteners, so you're trading calories for chemicals. Uh, there's a new line of mid-calorie sodas on the market, which contain both calories and chemicals. And then natural sodas in the past, um, while taste delicious and are full of really great premium ingredients, typically are high in calories because you're talking about full cane sugar, agave sweetened, and then what I think is so fascinating is even some, will quote, natural diet sodas contain aspartame. There are brands marketed as natural, but their diet option is, in fact, not. So soda has traditionally been full of calories and chemicals. And because soda has been the bad for you item, um, it's taken all the blame, we look to schools as an option, you know, as to provide our kids better alternatives things like sports drinks and juice, juice boxes, carbonated juices, energy, and vitamin waters. Um, but if you go to the next slide, you'll see something really interesting. And this is just a comparison, serving sizes, calories, and sugar grams. Some of the alternatives, like juice and carbonated water, uh, and flavored waters, carbonated juices, and sports drinks, have just as much, if not more, sugar and calories per serving than soda. So while we're talking about, you know, there's carbonated and typically full of aspartame or high fructose corn syrup, these other alternatives have fructose, which we learned about has, you know, more recent dangerous side effects, um, aspartame, artificial colors, and other sweeteners. And these are so important because while juice does play a role in, you know, our kids' diet, um, it's important to know that one pound of fat is equal to about 3,500 calories. So you can just think through the math for a second. If you, you would gain about tw a pound every 20 days if you drank that extra 175 calories. So what you're like, it's, you know, what you might say to yourself, it's just one Powerade. It's just one extra fizzy, you know, juice. It's just one giant latte from Starbucks. Uh, one pound every 20 days really adds up, and I know that we really want our kids to be getting the most nutritious calories they can because we want them to grow as healthy as possible. So, you know, we can talk a little bit about where all sugar is hiding, and I love this list because it really keeps me on my toes at the grocery store. And as I mentioned, yogurt is really high in sugar or artificial sweeteners if you're looking for something in the lower to mid-calorie range. Um, but salad dressing, cereal, even bread. And, it's, you know, we started doing some research on why sugar or high fructose corn syrup seems to be everywhere. And there's two real reasons. And first, it's believed to improve the taste. We, as a, you know, people are conditioned to like sweetness. And second, it can serve as a preservative to lengthen the shelf life of an item. And I don't know about you, but, you know, it's my belief that I think things should be on my shelf as long as they're fresh, not artificially fresh. So the takeaway is that you really have to read the label to find the sugars and the artificial sweeteners because the artificial sweeteners are not limited in usage to only the packets that you put in your coffee. So let's talk a little bit about how you can find that information. And I, you know, what I love is that the truth is all hiding on the label. You just have to know what you're looking for and how to read it. So nutrition back, you know, everyone should be familiar with this box. But it's a quick read for all the basics. The ingredient list, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the items are listed in order of the amount by weight in the product. So I think that's really interesting because you want to know that 
um, are you getting what you purchased? If you're purchasing whole wheat bread, for instance, is whole wheat the first item on the, on the ingredient list? You want to know who it's distributed by because that'll tell you who's really making the product. Um, made in the USA or product of the USA. Well, there are some really great imports. You know, we personally take pride in making our product here in the USA, and I think um, that's of, of great importance to them. And then other certifications and designations. Uh, while it isn't regulated by the FDA, there are regulatory organizations for each, uh, gluten-free certification, the vegan group, kosher, recyclable, et cetera. So now that I've told you all of the really scary things, if you will, about what is in your what's in your beverages, I want to tell you a little bit about Zevia. And my personal story is that I stopped drinking soda. I was a wine, coffee, water girl for the longest time because I grew up in a household where Diet Coke and Diet Dr. Pepper were prevalent and a mom that loved them. I just, you know, in college I became very aware with of natural products and had an appreciation for things that were just a little bit healthier. Soda never fit into that category. Then I found Zevia and I was so excited because I realized how much I missed that little carbonated kick. And when you want a soda, there's not much else that satisfies. So our goal is to bring you a smarter soda option. Um, Zevia is always zero calories, it contains no artificial sweeteners, and it's all natural. We sweeten our sodas with stevia, and they contain no sugar. They're certified gluten-free, vegan. We are pursuing our non-GMO certification now. They contain non-GMO ingredients and are kosher. Um, we are also available in 15 delicious flavors, and I think this is kind of the best part of stevia. There's really something for every time of the day and every taste bud. I, I personally am a big fan of a cherry cola with lunch and sometimes a cream soda after dinner if I'm craving that like sweet dessert treat. It's a little more guilt-free in my opinion. So let's talk a little bit about stevia. Not sure how aware everyone is, but stevia is a great alternative sweetener. And I say alternative because it's plant-based. It's not in fact artificial. Uh, it's, you can see the little green stevia plant down there on your right-hand side. The leaves are about 300 times sweeter than sugar, and they have no calories and no effect on blood glucose levels. Um, it's been sweetening foods and beverages for hundreds of years. It originally hailed from South America. Uh, it's been their main alternative sweetener there for several hundred years now. It's been the main alternative sweetener in Japan since the 1970s. And in 2009, the FDA granted GRASS, which is generally recognized as safe status, to stevia. And specifically, I want to talk about Red A. Red A is the high purity form of stevia. And I know this can be a little confusing because you'll be sweetened with stevia, stevia extract, stevia leaf, and we'll note Red A, Rabadiana, Rebiana. They're all the same. The FDA approved glycoside is called Red A, which is the appropriate way to note it. Every stevia you're tasting is going to be the same with the uh, with the difference being the percent of strength. So stevia awareness. What I love so much about the sweetener, in a very, very short amount of time, it's grown so rapidly. And I think that's because there are really informed consumers like you making these decisions. They're looking for natural alternative sweeteners that are zero calories, that are safe for their families to use. So the APA, the American Pregnancy Association, has denoted it as safe during pregnancy and nursing. It also has been, there's been some um, comments around uh, on the, that side and others about CDA use with kids, um, very safe. And then in addition, it's actually become the number two alternative sweetener now, just behind Splenda. So if you remember back to those blue packets and pink packets, CDA is taking its place as, as consumers are really looking for that natural alternative option. And some of the branded forms of stevia um, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's some great options that are readily available in your grocery store aisles now. Let's talk a little bit more about stevia, and we'll just talk about the nutrition panels and the ingredient list and how it stacks up. Um, we'll take the facts. So our serving size is a whole can. You love when you get a package and the serving size is a very, very small sliver of it, but that's not the case. In this whole can, there are zero calories. And again, zero fat. 
this is our great soda panel, but in all Zevia, there's either zero or 20 milligrams of sodium per can, which is considered very low by the FDA. Uh, carbs, we have no net carbs. We do have seven grams of carbs from between four and seven grams of carbs from erythritol. And erythritol is a sugar alcohol. Uh, it's a natural sweetener that comes from fruits and vegetables. We use it in combination with stevia because it gives you kind of that right mouthfeel, right weight in the recipe. And they're non they're considered non-net carbs because they're completely excreted from your body and not retained. So we can go to the next slide and we'll take a closer look at the ingredient list. Um, so it's first with carbonated water. It makes sense because it's the first ingredient by weight and mass. Soda is mostly water. Erythritol, as we talked about before, it's really heavy in weight, which pairs with a really lightweight of stevia and makes that kind of great sweetness. Citric acid is a natural carbonator and preservative, which is what we use to keep something shelf stable. It comes straight from citrus. Uh, Rev-A, otherwise known as stevia, or Rebodiana A, the FDA-approved glycoside that we talked about. And then other good stuff, and this varies by flavor, but for instance in grape, we use a white grape juice extract, real ginger, we use cherry essence, lemon oil, wintergreen oil, clove, nutmeg. You're going to see items on our ingredient list that are, you're like, I have that in my kitchen, and that's kind of the point. You know, what makes up cola, it's real things, it's not this secret sauce in a kitchen um, that's been protected by generations and generations of, you know, lock and key. So, in short, you know what's in Zevia because it's incredibly transparent and it's guilt free. Now, one of the things I love the most about Zevia, in addition to its great taste, is cooking with it because I fancy myself a very, very amateur um, kind of Martha. And uh, these are some of the great recipes that we've cooked up among the Zevia team and some of our fans have blogged about. Everything from a black cherry granito down in the bottom, right hand corner, which by the way couldn't be easier and a more delicious dessert during the summer, to pan fried black cherry chicken, creamy, you know, marinated baked apple oatmeal, um, orange bun cake, all kinds of great stuff. So we, all these recipes are linked here. And you'll be able to get them or you can always go to the recipes page on our website. And I've included some of our contact information. You know, we'd love to connect with you on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest. Um, if you ever have a question, a concern, or you wanted to share a great story with us, we'd love to hear it. You know, I think we have some really passionate fans, and we've been so blessed because they really keep us excited, and we know that we're doing something that's changing a lot of people's lives. And if you're really interested in learning a little bit more about sugar, Dr. Sanjay Gupta did a really fascinating study. Um, and presentation on 60 Minutes just a few months ago. It's uh, readily available online. Just Google it. It's, it's, been, it's a really, really phenomenal piece, and I think it dives really deeply into the science behind how dangerous sugar can be in our diet. And finally, let's talk about the really fun stuff, saving. So we have some great coupons available both here just for our Green Mom Paint group and then on our website at cdia.com slash saving. And Zevia can be found at some great national retailers like Whole Foods, Kroger, and Safeway, uh, select Target and Walgreens stores, and some wonderful regional options like Sprouts, Albertsons, Shining Eagle, Wegman, IV, and so many more. We have a store locator at Zevia.com. So just type in your zip code, and you can find a location just near you. And that concludes my portion of the presentation today, but I am so excited to hear what questions you guys might have for me. Great. Thank you so much, Natalie. There, that was a lot of really great information, and we're getting a ton of uh, questions in from our attendees. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, so we have some questions about um, those who are diabetic. Um, obviously, it seems like a great product um, for those who are diabetic. Could you um, talk a little bit about that and, and why, it, you know, if you know if it is safe for diabetics and if, you know, why that is? Sure, sure. You know, uh, Zevia is safe for diabetics, but we obviously want, you know, think you should consult with any physician before um, changing your diet drastically. We have been partnering with the American Diabetes Association and attending all of their consumer expos. In addition, we sponsored their Tour to Cure races this summer. So 
Um, the American Diabetes Association is a fantastic partner of our brand. And one of the things that I respect most about them is that they don't just let anybody uh, come to partner with them. So they took a hard look at our ingredient list, our processes, our, um, our products, they even did tasting to make sure it tastes good, and we were approved. And I think that's something that's so important because diabetics are really looking for um, healthier alternatives, and that hasn't typically included uh, great natural alternatives as well. Great. I mean, do, do you think that this um, is a good alternative for, for kids? Is it safe for kids in general? It is. It is safe for kids, and it's a great alternative for kids. Um, we have several on this, this team that are younger than you would imagine, and they are, they're enjoying it a lot. So, um, you know, I would say the 10 non-caffeinated offerings are what we would suggest as being safe for kids. Right, right. So could you clarify, we did have a question about um, which products contained um, mm. caffeine. Could you clarify which? Sure. Absolutely. So we have five flavors with caffeine, which is cola, cherry cola, lime cola, Dr. Zevia, and Mountain Zevia all contain caffeine. And in fact, they all contain the same amount of caffeine as their traditional mainstream alternative. Okay. The other ten flavors have no caffeine. Okay, great, great. Um, and could you uh, clarify a little bit for those who might not know um, why is high fructose corn syrup really bad? Or you know, are there any um, side effects to you know having too much high, high fructose corn syrup in your system? Could you do you have any idea? Can you explain that? Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm definitely not an expert on high fructose corn syrup and the dangers around it, but I think there's, there's two pieces to me that are really, well, three actually. First, it's full of calories. We know that to be true. Um, I personally believe in not adding extra calories into my diet that are not going to give me maximum energy and a lot more nutrients. Uh, second, we know that high fructose corn syrup comes from corn. And if you're looking to have a non-GMO diet, or at least a limited GMO um, inclusion in your diet, high fructose corn syrup is going to challenge that. And then secondly, you know, I think it's concerning that we just don't metabolize high fructose corn syrup in the same way that we do sugar. And the science behind that is, is, is quite dense, but I would encourage anybody that really wants to dig a little deeper, you know, if experts are saying, health experts are saying that families should avoid it, that's that's one concern in, in my book that's worth taking a closer look at. Right, right, yeah, definitely. Um, do you uh, know if there is a recommended daily allowance for stevia? There, the FDA has not confirmed that there is any recommended daily allowance for stevia, so it is unlimited use is approved. Okay. And do you think you'd be able to describe maybe um, the taste of stevia, is there an aftertaste? Um, some of our moms are wondering that. Sure, that's a great question. You know, I, every, first of all, everyone's taste buds are completely different. And when I think I have it figured out, um, it, I meet someone new. Um, some people find a really, can find a bitter or a light aftertaste. Uh, it, it's really all over the board. Those two things don't sound alike at all. Um, we be I believe that some flavors are more pronounced than others. So you might taste it in the ginger ale when you wouldn't in the grapefruit citrus or vice versa. Um, you might love the black cherry, but it's super pronounced in the ginger root beer for you. So I would encourage you to try a couple of flavors. If you, if you taste it in one you know, and you just didn't love it, give us a call or shoot us an email. Let us know. We'd love to help you find a flavor that's, you know, that's really great for you and your family because Stevia is something that you're going to want to, you know, maybe drink the whole can of it and uh, and go from there. It definitely affects everybody a little bit differently. Great, great. And could you, um, uh, do you have a recommendation on maybe a new uh, person who's new to, to Zevia? I mean, do you recommend starting off in a certain flavor? Um, Ooh. First? <laughs> um, that's a great question. We joke that with when people ask us what our favorite flavor is, it's like picking which child is your favorite because at any given point, you know, you have a huge, deep love and affinity for all of them. So I would say it really depends on what you're used to drinking. If you're a hardcore Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi drinker, 
I'd probably encourage you to try something like grape or black cherry or cream soda. Um, you're going to you're gonna notice a difference in the cola taste if you to start. Um, if you, but, you know, with that being said, I think our cola is delicious. So I think you should, you know, dive right in. I'd say there's no bad flavor. It really just depends on what your personal taste is. Okay, great. And um, do you have any? Uh, we have some a few uh, people asking if you have any new flavors in the works. Oh, great question. Nothing I get to talk about today, but I would encourage <laughs> you to, to keep in touch. And if you ever have a flavor suggestion, you know, let us know. Our cherry cola and strawberry, which were released um, in March of this year, are directly from consumer requests. So if you think there's something we're missing, we want to hear about it. Wonderful, wonderful. And could you, um, you're showing uh, here some of the uh, stores, um, this slide here. Um, it, is it, are there any other stores that it's available um, other than this? Yeah, it's, yeah where can mom find out what stores? Sure, you if you just go to zevia.com, there's a store locator. You can enter your zip code, and it'll tell you, you know, everywhere that sells right around you. And what I didn't list on here that I'd like to call attention to is amazon.com, especially if any of you are Amazon mom or Amazon Prime users like I am. Uh, it will ship to you for free, and you get a really great discount on it. So. Uh, it's a great place to try it as well if you want that extra light added by your convenience. But there's about 15,000 stores nationwide, and um, just check out our store locator. I will call attention to Target. We are in about 350 Target stores, not nationwide just yet. So um, please make sure to check our locator, store locator. I don't, I don't want anyone to be frustrated when they hit the store shelf and they can't find it. Right, right. Great. Yeah, uh, we have um, a question from someone who is asking if there are any preservatives in the the product. Sure, preservatives preservatives are interesting. Preservatives are typically known of as artificial. So there are natural occurring preservatives that just help keep things shelf stable, if you will, like citric acid and tartaric acid. They occur naturally in fruits and vegetables and. They, we have items like, we have ingredients like those. We don't use other typical um, preservatives down in soda like phosphoric acid. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but um, phosphoric acid is really, it's a dangerous preservative in my opinion. It has um, a lot of history of tooth decay and the wearing down of your bones. It depletes the calcium in your system. It additionally should never be used if you are on dialysis or you experience any renal problems. So we use no phosphoric acid in any of our sodas, which makes them um, a, um, a good alternative for patients that are affected by that. But additionally, um, you know, anybody just looking to not not have the tooth decay and bone density loss that I'm sure we all are trying to avoid. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that actually answers the next question I had, which was, you know, does stevia um, or is it a reduce the risk of cavities? So it sounds like the answer is yes. Yeah, I mean, I won't say it'll reduce the risk of cavities, but if there is a difference in regular soda versus Zevia, we've definitely found that dentists are more excited about um, Zevia, mine included, because, you know, they're worried about phosphoric acid. And tartaric acid, which is what we use instead, um, actually has bone building, building and calcium enriching properties. So it's on that A plus list of great, great natural items that can also be a helpful preservative in shelf stableness. Great, great. And um, if you could just say, you know, what's the, the top, your biggest benefit, the top benefit of switching you know, from regular soda to Zevia, what would you say to that? I say it's twofold. No calories, no artificial sweeteners. You know, if you want to cut the calories out of your diet and continue to drink soda, but you also want to, you know, drink and eat naturally, this is a great alternative and replacement for you. Great, great. Um, and what kind of shelf life does soda have? Uh, 12 months to 18 months. So you'll find it fresh on every store shelf. Okay. Great, great. And uh, we have a few moms wondering if it's safe during pregnancy. I believe you did say that at one point during your presentation. Yeah, I did. And, you know, as I just had my first little man, I want to call special attention to that because, I, you know, it's something we're very, very hyper aware of and sensitive to. Um, we went straight to the American Pregnancy Association, and they did a fantastic 
uh, kind of analysis of all sweeteners, and they deem stevia as safe for use during pregnancy. And we talked to a lot of um, obstetricians and nutritionists, and they all agree. So the APAs, um, you can also check out their website at the American Pregnancy Association.org, I believe. Wonderful. Uh, we have a couple of people asking if uh, there are any plans for if uh, Zevia is already in vending machines. Zevia is in select vending machines and growing pretty rapidly, but if there is a particular vending machine that you would like to see us in, we can definitely help with that. Um, there are some great vending companies that are focusing on putting healthier alternatives in machines, and that's where you're going to see Zevia first. Great. Great. And I know that uh, you know uh, there are many of our moms who are, who are really curious about the recipes that you had referred to. Um, could yes. you share maybe what your, your favorite recipe is and where moms can go find some more ideas? Sure. So um, my favorite one, wow. I'm going to actually give a recipe, not a cocktail this time, although I'm sure some of the moms would appreciate those as well. I referenced that black cherry granita, and I actually made that. It was so so good and so easy. I served it at a summer barbecue this summer. Um, it's really just a combination of fresh black cherries, uh, one can of black cherry zevia, and a little bit of mint. Just chop those cherries, put them in the food processor with the mint, pour the zevia in, and the whole. It's just a little bit of back and forth in your freezer. You freeze it for 20 minutes, freeze it with a fork, freeze it for 20 minutes, freeze it with a fork, and you get this really light, kind of icy texture. It's so delicious. So you can find that and so many more recipes at cvia.com slash recipes, or you can go there just through the navigation on the home page. That's great. Great. Thank you. Uh, that's wonderful. Okay, so we have, um, we have a few more questions here. Um, so we have one um, mom wondering um, what erythritol, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. Can you provide just a little bit more information about that? Absolutely. Erythritol is this really interesting ingredient. We get a lot of questions about it, so I'd, I'd love to tell you more. Um, it's overly scientific sounding and sounds really scary, but it isn't. It is, um, it's called a sugar alcohol, but it's not a sugar or an alcohol. It comes from fruits and vegetables like apples, grapes, corn, pears. Um, I'll be really clear, ours comes from corn, from non-GMO corn. We are very careful in sourcing that because we want to you know, be non-GMO. Um, erythritol is a sweetener, kind of, a, you'll, you might recognize the name of some other sugar alcohols like xylitol or sorbitol. Erythritol is different because it doesn't have the same digestive issues that xylitol or sorbitol might have if you have a sensitive GI tract. And erythritol is a really heavy and weight natural sweetener, whereas stevia itself is really, really light in weight, and the combination together um, make it work in the formula and the recipe for the soda. Um, as you can imagine, you know, sugar is, has a very specific weight, and artificial sweeteners have been made to mimic that weight. But because stevia is natural and it is exactly what it is, you can't make it heavier. So the combination of the two um, make it a really, really awesome option for us. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, we have uh, a few wondering um, if Zevia is only available in cans or is it available in two-liter bottles? Do you have any plans? Sure. So Zevia right now is available in 12-ounce cans sold in six-packs or single serve, and 16-ounce cans, kind of some tall boys. Um, we have several new packaging formats coming out early next year. Nothing I can confirm or deny just yet. But um, I think everyone's going to be pleased, and two leaders are definitely something that are, pique our interest on a regular basis. Wonderful. And could you um, share what the price range is? Sure. Zevia, um, the six packs of Zevia are sold anywhere from three ninety nine to five ninety nine every day, just kind of depending on the retailer. Um, we also have a lot of great coupons, and we find that um, some of our most savvy moms pay pennies for Zevia because. They uh, take advantage of all the good offers we put out. So I definitely would encourage you to, to check for the specials, check the coupon booklets at your retailers. We do a lot of couponing at the retailer as well. And then um, check our website, of course. Great. And um, you did uh, touch on this before, I believe. But could you just share one more time how the stevia leaves are processed? We're having a couple of sure. people wondering that. Absolutely. So the stevia leaf processing is really interesting, and I'm going to try 
I'm going to try to remember how to walk through this easily. Um, this, so our CV is actually grown in California. It's right here in the U.S. And I mean, I have to just say a little bit of commentary. These fields are stunning. It's like among orchards. It's so beautiful and so green. Um, so they harvest the stevia, and then they basically take the leaf off of the, the stem, and then the leaves are basically pounded down and, they, and kind of reduced to like a powder, um, just dried and then reduced to a powder. And that, then the, the glycosides are extracted from that in an overly scientific process. But that's the long and short of it. Great. Thank you. Uh, and we're winding down here um, to a few more questions. Um, we have some wondering uh, if you have any juice products or any other products planned along the, the um, same yeah, you know, we have some exciting line expansions coming in the, you know, in the next year or so. So definitely stay tuned. But right now, we are just focused on soda today. Okay, great, great. Uh, and then we have uh, one person wondering about, you know, the, the sweetness level um, of stevia. H how do you think, I mean, could you describe it? Is there a way to kind of share if it's sweeter than, than your typical sweetener, or how does it compare? Sure. Well, fine to say that stevia is 300 times sweeter, sugar, sweeter than sugar. Now, I've actually tasted the stevia leaf, and I think that's, that's pretty fair. It's incredibly sweet. Um, it, as far as the sweetness in Zevia, I think we've, you know, we've tried to, in the best way possible, really balance out the stevia and the sweetness in the soda, because the last thing you want is to drink it and you know, be shockingly sweet to you. So, we hope that you'll find it's um, a similar sweetness to other mainstream sodas you like, but everyone has a different opinion. Okay, great, great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. Uh, that kind of wraps up um, all the, the questions uh, and the answers. I hope uh, we were able to um, answer everyone's questions today, and we learned so much from your presentation. Very informative, and I know a lot of our mom ambassadors have already tried Zevia, and we've We've gotten some really great feedback from it. So, uh, you know, we're excited uh, to hear um, from the moms who are trying the Zevia now. We're excited to hear what you have to say. Um, so with that said, uh, really, we, we're going to be wrapping up today's session. I just wanted to remind all the moms um, on the, the webinar today that make sure you check out the website, nozevia.com, at Green Moms Meet. Um, for uh, your coupon, you can also check out greenmomsmeet.com. Zevia for a coupon there as well. Um, and uh, with that said, uh, Natalie, do you have any last uh, words or thoughts that you'd want to share? And no, I just really want to thank everybody for their time today and their excitement about Zevia. As you can, I hope you can tell this is such a passion project for our, you know our team, and we're really excited to be a part of something um, that both tastes good and is better for you. So I hope you all get a chance to try it, and you know don't don't be a stranger if you have any questions or. Um, any concerns, definitely shoot us an email or give us a call, okay? Great. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank and I you. hope everyone, uh, you, you have a wonderful rest of your uh, afternoon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank